hope that you are good and today i'm so happy i'm excited and i want to start by thanking all of you for supporting my channel that is subscribing and giving me those positive comments and i thank those who shared my link thank you so much and god bless you so in this lesson we are going to deal with act one of adults house the stylistic devices and remember this can be two to four marks in your KCC, so pay much attention. So we're gonna deal with Act 1 and next week we're gonna meet for the Act 2. Okay, and the first stylistic device that you're gonna deal with is symbolism. And this is the use of signs, marks and symbols to represent an abstract idea. And the Christmas, gift, uh, the Christmas gifts that Nora bought are symbolic. She bought a, a suit and a sword for Ivar, a horse and a trumpet for Bob, and a doll and a dolly's bedsit for Amy. By buying Amy a doll and a dolly's bedsit, it symbolizes that Nora sees Amy the same way that Tovald and her father sees her. That is like a doll. Let us take page four. Page four in the middle. Yes, yes, that is Nora speaking. But come here and let me show you what I have bought and all, all so cheap. Look, here is a new suit for Ivar, and a sword and a horse for, uh, and a trumpet for Bob, and a doll and a dolly's bed seat for Amy. So that is symbolism. And the second symbol in Act 1, we have the Christmas tree. And this one symbolizes the family, unity, and happiness and the joy that Nora takes in making her home attractive. So on page one, the porter brings that Christmas tree to Nora. Let us have that one. Nora is saying, hide the Christmas tree carefully and then be sure the children do not see it until this evening when it is dressed. So that is symbolism. And again, you can check on page eight. Number two, we have foreshadow and this refers to clues signs or hints that something will happen in the future and we have the first foreshadow on page two nora eating the macaroon and she's denied by her husband to eat the macaroon but she eats the macaroon while hiding shadows her later rebellion against toward so let us take page two she takes a packet of macaroons from her pocket and eats one and then down there against the same direction, puts the bag of macaroon into her pocket and wipes her mouth. The second instance of foreshadow is on page four, still on the Christmas gift. Nora buys Amy a doll and a dolly's bed seat. So this foreshadows uh, the doll's life that she is going to live with her husband later. And again, we are on page 16, uh, still on foreshadow. Taking the middle where Mrs. Lynn, uh, Nora is telling Mrs. Lynn, you just like others, they all think that I'm incapable of anything really serious. So this foreshadows that Nora is capable of doing something serious, of which she did later in the play. That is taking or making that decision of leaving Toval. And the other instance of foreshadow in Act 1 is on page 20. That is, when Mrs. Lind asked Nora whether she has that intention of revealing her secret of borrowing the money to her husband, she said she'll do that later when Tobal is no longer devoted to her as he is right now. So we'll, uh, we'll, to, we'll check the evidence for that on page 20. Mrs. Lynn is saying, do you mean never to tell this uh, him about it? And then Nora is saying, some days perhaps after many years, when I'm no longer as nice looking as I, I am now, and continue there, you'll see that explanation. Next, we have that humor, and this is a literary device or a style that it makes you to laugh. You are reading a certain piece of writing and it's making you to laugh. So that is humor. And we have one on page 25 when Mrs. Lynn says or she told Dr. Ran that she cannot manage a test yes because of overworking herself. And then Dr. Ran asked, uh, asked Mrs. Lynn 
whether she has come to town to her to amuse herself with entertainment and then mrs lynn says that she has come to look for work and it's funny when dr rang asked mrs lynn is that a good cure for overwork so that is humor i don't know whether you found it funny but just know that is humor top of page 25 mrs lynn yes i can go uh, i go up very slowly i can manage stairs well and again mrs lynn is saying the fact is i have been overworking myself and i have got and she's saying she's come to look for over so if you read that page you'll find that humor there is another humor on page 10 that is during the conversation between nora and mrs lynn and mrs lynn is saying uh, nora nora is asking it was very bad of me christine poor thing how you must have suffered and left left you nothing no and no children no not at all then not even a sorrow or grief to live upon so it's funny when mrs lynn is saying the husband never left her even a sorrow or a grief to to live upon a little quick and this is a speech in a play in which a character who is alone on stage speaks his or her thoughts that is they have to be alone the first instance of soliloquy is on page 41 when Croxard left Nora. You remember that he had written to reveal her secret if she does not use her influence as Helma's wife to ensure that uh, Croxard keeps her his position. So after Croxard uh, left, Nora speaks her mind. Page 41 at the bottom, Nora appears buried in thoughts for a short time then tosses her head and then she's alone she's speaking nonsense trying to frighten me like that i am not silly as he thinks mm -hmm. begins to busy herself putting the children things in order and then no and yet no it's impossible i did it for love's sake so nora is alone there so that makes it to be soliloquy because she's speaking her thought the second instance of soliloquy is on page 42 to 43 again nora speaks her thought when she was alone on stage after that after the maid leaves then she say a candle here and flowers here that horrible man it's all nonsense there's nothing wrong the tree shall be splendid I will do everything I uh, think of to please you, so I will sing for you, dance for you, and she was alone again, so that is soliloquy. And lastly, we have one on page 48, Nora speaks her thoughts again. After the nurse left, this is what Nora, she is speaking her mind again, and she says, They prep my little children, poison my home, and then there is a short pause. It's not true. It can possibly be true. Hyperbole, and this is extreme exaggeration. And on page 46 to page 47, Helma exaggerates the intensity of Krogstad's forgery. And this is what he said. Page 46, down there, Helma is saying, just think of how guilty a man like that has to, to lie and play the hypocrite role with everyone, how he has to wear a mask in the presence of those who are near and dear to him, even before his own wife and children and their lives. So that is exaggeration. In case you find your excerpt is from here, that is hyperbole. Coincidence, and this is where two actions or two things happen at the same time, at, at the same time as if they were planned, but they were not planned. And page 8 to page 9, we see Mrs. Lynn and Dr. Rang arriving to Helma's home at the same time as if it was planned and yet it was not planned. So page 8 to 9, page 8 down there, the maid is saying, a lady to see you ma'am, a stranger. Uh -huh. And Nora is saying, ask, to, ask her to come in. And the maid, the doctor came at the same time. So that is our coincidence. And lastly, uh, next is irony. 
and this is the opposite of our expectation or the use of what to say the opposite of what you mean on page three to page four if you read we see that Tobad accuses Nora of being a spendthrift but later he gives Nora money for housekeeping we did not uh, expect that he will give Nora money after calling her a spendthrift so that is ironic and on page 25 it is ironic that Mrs. Lynn says that he, she cannot manage the stairs because of overworking herself and when Dr. Ran asks her whether she has come to undertake herself in town she says that she has come to look for work so in that one the whole statement is ironic and lastly we have the rhetorical questions they are there these are the questions that do not require answers and i want you to give me some of the rhetorical questions in the comment section remember they are questions that do not require answers and rhetorical questions brings us to the end of our lesson today thank you for watching i hope you have learned a new thing <laughs> and i wish you all the best as you revise for your kcse remember you have and least a few days, two months. And all the best. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.